Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Before I worked at the Battleship, I worked here on board Constellation, a part of Historic Ships in Baltimore's collection. And this week, the curatorial and education staff from the Battleship is in Baltimore to help them dry dock their National Historic Landmark uh, High Endurance Coast Guard Cutter Number 37, formerly Taney, which is going into dry dock for the first time since 2003. So while we were here, we decided to film some videos on Constellation, our old stomping grounds, and uh, tell you about some of the things here that are ancient forebearers of Battleship New Jersey. So this space we're on now is the berth deck. It is one of four decks on Constellation. And this is where the crew, 319 individuals rated to serve on Constellation, uh, would have stayed, with the exception of the captain, who stayed one deck above us in the captain's cabin on the gun deck. So, uh, the bulk of the crew slung hammocks like this one. Every sailor was issued their own hammock, which is a tradition that carried on uh, to when New Jersey was in service. And some of the old battleships still in service in World War II still used hammocks, although New Jersey had racks built in. Uh, the, the crew still showed up with their hammocks, which would have gone into a locker down below. Uh, but Constellation had nothing but hammocks. Everyone had their own, and everybody had their own hook to hang it on. During the day, these hammocks would be taken up, rolled into bundles, and put into uh, the hammock rails. And uh, there they were, one, aired out. It's it kind of smelly with 320 guys down here at once. Uh, and uh, they basically formed sandbags that protected the crew on deck from shrapnel if the ship got into any sort of engagement. Uh, so during the day, this was just a completely wide open space. And uh, so this is where the off-duty half of the crew would spend their free time. Behind me, you can see a mess cloth with a meal set out on it. This is where the crew would eat their meals. It was prepared in the galley, one deck above us, and then brought down the ladder here by mess cooks. On contemporary Royal Navy ships, they had tables and chairs, but the U.S. Navy, one, didn't want to spend money on that, and two, didn't want to turn that stuff into shrapnel in an engagement, so the crew sat on a deck around a mess cloth, uh, picnic style. When you sign on to a ship like this, you would be signing on for three-year deployment, where the ship would generally sail away from the United States for that period of time. Uh, so for those three years, you sat on the deck like that. If you would like to test out one of these hammocks like I'm in now, Historic Ships in Baltimore has an overnight program. Uh, be sure to check their website to see when they start doing it again. It's currently closed because of the pandemic, uh, but it'll come back later. Groups as large as 60 people can sleep down here on the berth deck during their encampment program. Life on Constellation, like on modern Navy ships, was extremely hierarchical. The lowest ranking sailors were put as far forward as possible and out towards the side of the ship. The highest ranking sailors would have slept amidships with the uh, near the center line. That was the part of the ship that rocked the least, while the bow and the stern tended to rock more. Aft of those sailors slept the ship's 44 marines. Uh, their weapons were kept nearby on racks. This was to prevent any mutinies of the sailors up forward being able to come back aft and overthrow the officers. And we're all the way aft where the officers' wardroom is with all the staterooms around us. Midshipmen slept closest to amidships. They were uh, as young as 13 years old and By the time Constellation was in service, the U.S. Navy did have an academy for training midshipmen. But earlier sailing ships 
would have had the midshipmen just learn their trade on board. And Constellation does have a midshipman's cabin and uh, would have had midshipmen on board uh, at least during part of their training process, in addition to serving at the academy on the Severn River. Uh, as you get back here to the officers, the highest ranking ones are forward, again, closest to midships, and the lowest ranking ones are back aft. The officers are further subdivided between the ones on the right-hand side, or the more important side, and those are the line officers. The first lieutenant, or the executive officer, and then second, third, fourth, fifth lieutenant going all the way back. Uh, those are the guys in line to command the ship if something happens to the captain. And they stand watches controlling the ship and navigating everything while she's underway. On the port side, or the less important uh, side, you had your staff officers. So these are the guys who would not rise in rank to command the ship, but they are subject matter experts in their field. For example, the sailing master, the chaplain, the surgeon. Uh, they're all officers, they're all highly trained professionals, but they're not uh, in line to command the ship. All of them would eat here uh, around the table, just like the wardroom on New Jersey. The final feature on the berth deck is sick bag, which on Constellation is located all the way forward. Because the berth deck is partially above water, in combat, the surgeon would remove all of his tools to a deck below us, underwater, uh, where it's most protected. But this area where you can hear the waves lapping against the front of the ship, uh, and as we've already discussed, where it rocks the most, because we're all the way forward, was the sick bay traditionally. And it was done that way to prevent malingerers from uh, pretending to be sick and coming up here. It is the least comfortable place on the ship. Uh, some major features, you see a hammock over there that is uh, set up as a sick bay bed, so you can't roll out of it. And uh, I'm sitting on the surgical table right now. A far cry from the uh, surgical suite that uh, Battleship New Jersey has. Now this is the captain's cabin, which is one deck higher than everyone else. Remember that hierarchical uh, standing based on position on the ship? This guy is literally above the other 318 rated members of the crew. Uh, this is the aft end of the gun deck. The forward end of the uh, gun deck, actually outside of the ship, is the ship's head, or bathroom, which is basically an open-air latrine um, where you use the bathroom into a trough of pipes leading down to the water. So the captain is as far away from where the other 318 people are doing their business as possible. Uh, he happens to have two bathrooms down here. If you've ever looked at a sailing ship and seen that there are stern galleries that stick out of the side of the back of the ship, those are both the captain's uh, head. There are two, one so that it's symmetrical, and two because if there was ever a commodore or an admiral assigned on board, well then the captain would be kicked out of the starboard side suite of rooms, which includes a bedroom and a head, into uh, the port side suite of rooms, where he would uh, sling a hammock here in his office. Uh, the common area here he would either use for dining or would uh, share with an admiral if, if they were on board. Some larger ships would have a deck stacked above the gun deck where uh, there was an additional cabin space for assigned flag officers. A smaller vessel like this um, would not have had that. And in fact, there, there wasn't an admiral in the U.S. Navy until the Civil War. Uh, a major feature in the captain's cabin is a large table. Many visitors think that it is for dining, but really only the captain ate in here. Uh, maybe he would invite officers in, but more likely the officers would invite him down below. It's for the same reason that uh, New Jersey has a large, lavish, in port cabin for the captain. Uh, 
more so when Constellation was in service, the United States did not have diplomats spread worldwide. They were only in some of the major countries that the U.S. Uh, interacted with frequently. So oftentimes, the captain of a U.S. Navy ship would be the highest ranking U.S. official uh, in a foreign country. And oftentimes, they would be sent to uh, do diplomatic missions, such as Commodore Perry's trip to Japan in 1853, while Constellation was under construction still. Uh, notably, during the Civil War, Constellation was assigned to the Mediterranean to hunt for Confederate commerce raiders and uh, to show the flag. So a big part of her job was to put into a bunch of foreign ports uh, and welcome people on board. And when they came on board, they would come on at the main deck and they would have to come down and walk the length of the gun deck with all of the ship's great guns to get back here to a lavishly appointed captain's cabin with a large table where they could negotiate. Uh, and, as it turns out, no European powers uh, actively supported the Confederacy or entered the Civil War. So, job well done there. Also, it kept a sail power ship like Constellation away from the littoral waters of the United States where most of the fighting was taking place, where she would have been absolutely chewed to pieces by steam-powered, rifled, shell-firing, armored warships. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section down below. Have you ever done an overnight on Constellation? Let us know. Uh, if you would like to support Historic Ships in Baltimore or the uh, former Coast Guard Cutter Taney while she's going into dry dock, we've got a link in the description for ways you can support. If you would like to uh, support Battleship New Jersey and our YouTube channel, We've also got a link to our GoFundMe campaign in the description down below. Um, donors like you are allowing us to come out and visit other museum ships like this one. Uh, and as always, we try, try to produce multiple pieces of content every week. So remember to like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we put out new stuff. See you next time.